From the Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove, California, join Robert Schuler in An Hour of Power, America's television church, now celebrating our 37th year as the face and voice of positive Christianity to the world. We have been talking for the last couple of weeks about really the direction of where this church is going and where we've come from and what we are all about as a community and as a church. Uh, we came to the conclusion after about a year and a half of study and countless hours by our staff and, and key volunteers and people in this church as to exactly what this ministry is all about. And we came down to three words. Can you believe it? You can summarize this entire ministry into three words. Know, love, and serve. That's what it's about. Sometimes the simple and the obvious takes a little longer to find. And we've discovered that God wants us to know Him. And so it begins by knowing God. And then loving people. And it is completed by serving the world. So this morning I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit about what we mean by serving the world and what it is that we are called as Christians and as individuals in this church to do when it comes to serving the world. You know, this past summer, we, I had a very interesting summer. Not only did we discover that, but I also finished my book and put the final touches on it. It's going to be out November 1st. It's entitled, Walking in Your Own Shoes, Discover God's Direction for Your Life. So that's going to be available November 1st. And the other thing I did is I went and I spent uh, the summer highlighting the Bible. I went through, I started with Genesis 1, and I highlighted what I consider the most positive, uplifting passages in the Bible and went through the whole thing. And you can almost read the highlighted sections, almost like reading cliff notes if you want to read through the Bible in a hurry. And I did that this summer, and we're going to have that Bible available Next summer, in the summer of 08, it's the Power for Life Bible. So, so pay attention and listen and, and watch as that comes about. Today, I really want to talk about service. Because it's close to my heart. It's something that we are challenged to do by Christ himself. It, it transcends who we are as individuals and people. There is nothing more important to God than to serving his people and his children. If you go and you read the Bible, you will read from beginning to end the need for us to serve God, serve people, and serve the world. In Matthew, we read these words from Jesus. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in? Or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did to one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did to me. Service. That's what this church is all about. It's about service. We begin, our main ministry is to serve people emotionally and spiritually. That's where we begin. That is the foundation upon which we have taken this ministry globally, and it is the visible aspect of our service to the world. We are intent on building people emotionally. So when people need hope, we give them hope. And when people are in despair, they have, uh, we lift them out of despair. We give people the understanding and the realization that through Christ, they can do all things. It's positive thinking. It's the bedrock of this ministry. But we go beyond that. We go beyond the intangible because the spiritual world is an intangible world. But there is a place at where the intangible becomes tangible. 
And this ministry is just as interested in the tangible as it is the intangible. And that means we literally go and we feed the hungry. And we clothe those who need clothing. We do whatever we can to help the homeless. We've been doing it for years and years and years. But it's almost one of those secret things that we do. I don't know how many people realize that every single Wednesday we have a semi-truck on this property and we're distributing thousands of pounds of food. Every single Wednesday we do that right here from this campus. I don't know how many people realize how many hundreds, maybe even thousands of wheelchairs that we have given away. My wife and I personally have gone around the world to Africa, to Russia, to Egypt, and we've given wheelchairs away. We've picked up the crippled and placed them in a wheelchair. You know, one of the things we did this past year is my wife went to Louisiana, Shreveport, Louisiana, yeah, she took a group of people with her, and she wasn't the only one. We sent out three or four groups of people to Louisiana, and we built this house. Today, a family lives in it. We did it with, in conjunction with Habitat for Humanity. And you need to know, one of the best-kept secrets in the world is what this ministry does in its tangible manner. We feed the hungry. We're partners in a, in a homeless center not far from here called Isaiah's House. And we send teams of people from this congregation to go there and to, and to cook meals for them and to pass out things and to help them in any way we can. We've done it for years. But we do these things around the world. And it's one of the best-kept secrets that I know about in this church is all of our missions programs. We have hundreds of missions programs disseminating from this congregation. Why? Because God has called us to serve. And Jesus Christ was the perfect example of what service is all about. In Luke, the apostles are arguing about who is the greatest. They say, you know, who is the greatest among us? Who's going to sit at the right hand of God? And who's going to do this and who's going to do that? And, and Jesus shows them what greatness is all about. And Jesus, in his meticulous way, got up from the table, put a towel around his waist, and he went and he washed their feet. He washed their feet. That's the greatest. The ones who get up and wash the feet. And what we fail to realize is how symbolic that was because there was nothing that's more humbling in the time of Christ than to go and to wash somebody's feet because their streets weren't like our streets. The donkeys and the camels and the sheep and the goats would walk up and down the streets and do what those animals do. And people walk through it. And it's all over their feet. And Jesus comes and he washes the dung off their feet. Who's the greatest? The greatest among us are the ones who are willing to serve, who are willing to give, who are willing to do something more, who are willing to make this world a better place. And that's what it's all about, serving the world.